Warning, this episode could be triggering for some viewers. Having a miscarriage is devastating. For many parents, it's a loss they carry with them their entire lives. About one in four known pregnancies end in miscarriage. So what makes them so common? And could medical science help us prevent them in the future? In today's episode, we explore what happens to your body during this difficult process to help shed some light on how and why miscarriages happen. This is Your Body On, having a miscarriage. A miscarriage is when a pregnancy ends on its own within the first 20 weeks. Most happen during the first trimester, the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, but sometimes they can happen before you even know you're pregnant. So what causes them? Well, more often than not, it can be out of your control. I'm bleeding. I think I'm losing the baby. Causes of miscarriage. While the term miscarriage sounds like something wrong happens during the carrying of a pregnancy, that's not always the case. Usually, it's when your unborn baby doesn't develop properly in the womb due to genetic factors. A healthy embryo requires two sets of 23 chromosomes from each parent. But if one set has more or less than 23, your baby could be at risk. This genetic mismatch accounts for more than half of all first trimester miscarriages. Sometimes no embryo will form, or if it does, it gets absorbed into the body. This is known as an anembryonic pregnancy. Or an embryo might simply stop developing, often with little to no warning. Is there anything in there? And there are other rarer complications as well, like molar pregnancies that could endanger your placenta, the organ that provides oxygen and nutrients to your baby. But genetic factors aren't the only potential cause of a miscarriage. Health factors. If you have existing health issues like diabetes, obesity, or infections, these can all increase your risk of miscarrying. Lifestyle factors like smoking, drinking alcohol, and using illegal drugs can make matters worse. And if you're older than 35, unfortunately, statistically, you have a much higher chance of losing your baby. According to the March of Dimes organization, by the age of 45, about half of all pregnancies end in miscarriage. No matter the reason, it's important not to blame yourself if a miscarriage happens. Doing heavy exercise, having arguments, or using birth control do not cause a miscarriage. Most of the time, they happen randomly, which isn't anyone's fault. Miscarriages and your body. Even though they can happen out of the blue, there are some signs to look out for. This can include light spotting to heavy bleeding. While some bleeding can be normal in your first trimester, you should still call your healthcare provider, especially if the bleeding is thicker and more painful than usual. Another sign is if your baby's movements have changed or you haven't felt them for a while. And this part might sound scary, but one of the most common indicators of miscarriage is if your body starts to expel tissue from your uterus. If this happens, call your doctor immediately and don't flush the evidence. It's important to keep this tissue in a clean container and bring it to your doctor or the hospital. This way, a lab technician can examine it for potential signs of a miscarriage. If not all pregnancy tissue is expelled, it can cause an infection, which can be very dangerous. It might trigger a roller coaster of chills, fever, and stomach pain. If you or someone you know seems to be going through a miscarriage, it's vital to seek medical attention as soon as possible. It could save your life. Can you prevent a miscarriage? As we mentioned earlier, sometimes miscarriages happen out of the blue, even to the healthiest people. But there are ways to increase your odds of a successful pregnancy. Seek regular prenatal care if you can. 
Avoid risk factors like smoking, drinking, and illegal drug use. And if you love coffee as much as I do, you might want to dial back all that Starbucks. Experts recommend sticking to no more than 200 milligrams of caffeine per day when you're pregnant. Also, if you have a long-term health condition like diabetes, work with your doctor to help manage your pregnancy. Luckily, research in the field is always evolving, and there's hope for more effective prevention and treatment options in the future. Scientists are working on advanced genetic screening technologies to develop personalized treatment plans for at-risk couples. Even wearable tech is in the works that could one day be used as an early miscarriage detection tool. Pretty cool. Repeat miscarriages. If you've already experienced a miscarriage and you're wondering if it might happen again, thankfully, you'll be armed with more information about your body. Some people discover they have fibroids or polyps in their uterus. This limits the space available for your baby and can interfere with its blood supply. Other people experience what's known as cervical insufficiency. This happens when your cervix dilates too soon during pregnancy, usually without contractions. If you've had two or more previous miscarriages, sadly, you've got a much higher risk to repeat. After suffering a miscarriage, it's important to get the right treatment before you plan to try again. Treatments. Your doctor might recommend some treatments depending on your age, health, and other factors. Sometimes they will perform a procedure to dilate your cervix to remove excess tissue known as a DNC, which stands for dilation and curatage. Or you might be given medicine to help pass the tissue left in your uterus. If you miscarried in your first trimester, you may not need any tests as it can be challenging to determine what caused it so early on in the pregnancy. But if you had your miscarriage in the second trimester or experienced a repeat miscarriage, getting tested is vital. These can include blood tests for you and your partner, like karyotyping, to check the health of your chromosomes. Your doctor may also examine your blood for hormone problems or autoimmune disorders, and they might look at your uterus with an ultrasound to check for any issues. No matter what the reason for your miscarriage is, it's important to take enough time to recover, especially for your mental health. Recovery. Losing a baby is a hard reality to face. It's critical to take enough time to cope with the grief and to let your body recover. Depending on the length of your pregnancy, you may still have pregnancy hormones in your bloodstream for one to two months after you miscarriage. This means your period will likely be delayed by about four to six weeks. And even though your body might recover quickly, the emotional healing can take much longer. This happens every day. All over the world, why do I feel like I'm the only one? Why do I feel like I'm on my own? It's okay for you and your partner to feel sad, angry, and confused, or even nothing at all. Everyone grieves differently. If you're currently struggling with a miscarriage, know that you're not alone. There are many support groups and services that can help you and your partner cope with the loss. I mean, she's the one who had the baby inside of her. She's the one who should be hurting. Why does it hurt? Why does it hurt me so much, eh? And if you're trying to console someone who has miscarried, the best two words you can say are, I'm sorry. While miscarriages can be hard emotionally, did you know that you could also feel anxious and depressed after a successful pregnancy? It's called postpartum depression, and it's more common than you might think. We'll uncover what your body and mind go through as a new mama on another episode of Your Body On.